Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at polydactyly. We're going to be looking at the genetics, the phenotype, we're going to be looking at the genotype, how it's inherited. But before we get straight into the video, this phenotype polydactyly has actually come up in quite a few films. So it's in The Princess Bride, which is an awesome, amazing film. I absolutely love that film. Um, if you are like, a fan of the Big Bang Theory, you'll see they quote that film like loads and loads in it. And it also comes up in Gattaca, which is another amazing film. I mean, I'm sure it comes up in other films, but I haven't seen those other films, so I don't know what they are. Um, Gattaca has Jude Law and Ethan Hawke in it, so win-win, basically. And it has, it talks about some really, really interesting ethics behind genetics. So, we're going to go over the genetics of polydactyl in this video. I have given you two really, really cool films to go and check out. And the last really, really cool thing you need to go and check out is Tuition Kit's website. They are supporting me at the moment, helping me make really, really cool videos for you. And the really, really cool thing about their website is that you can schedule in really, really easy with just, like, one click. Um, all of your study videos so that you can make sure you can fit everything in before your exams. Baby hands are so adorably cute. I mean, look at this one. Do you just want to squidge it and hug it? And oh, it's so cute. And by now you may have noticed one of the first things that parents do when they have a baby is count the fingers and toes. One, two, three, four, five. Six. This baby has an extra finger. This baby has polydactyly. So our phenotype for polydactyly is having an extra finger or toe. It is a dominant allele. So you will need one version of the gene, one allele of the polydactyly gene to have the phenotype of polydactyly. And this is just cosmetic. There are no um, serious implications of polydactyly and is easily fixed by plastic surgery. If the surgery is done when you're a baby, you may have been born with six fingers and never even realise. Now I'm going to draw a genetic cross between somebody that has polydactyly or had polydactyly but has it removed because of cosmetic surgery and somebody that doesn't have polydactyly. Now the letter I'm going to use for this is D just because P is a rubbish letter to use in genetic crosses. The uppercase and the lowercase form of P look virtually identical, whereas the uppercase and lowercase form of D are very different, so it's much easier to determine that D is the dominant gene, and little d is the recessive gene. So the mother's gametes are going to be one dominant and one recessive. The father's phenotype is normal, so because you only need one copy of the dominant gene, to have this phenotype, his genotype is going to be two recessive genes, that is going to be a D and a D. I know the way that I've set this out might seem kind of um, long and kind of cumbersome, with the mother's phenotype, the mother's genotype, mother's genome, the gametes, father's phenotype, father's genome, father's gametes, but this is the way to ensure that you get all of the marks. If you put all of this information down, chances are you're going to be covering absolutely everything the examiner could be looking for. Now we've drawn our Punnett square, you can see I'm putting the mother and her gametes at the top and the father and his gametes down the side. Now we can just start to fill it in, I'm going to take this um, allele and fill down, then this allele and fill down, this allele and fill across and then this allele and fill across. So the mother will have, uh, donate the dominant gene, the dominant gene, recessive, recessive and the father will give recessive, 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 recessive. Then we can look at the phenotypes of these potential four babies that have been born. So we can see that when there is the dominant L present, the children born are going to have polydactyly, and when there are two recessive alleles present, the children are going to have a normal phenotype of having five fingers. You need to look at some genetics, some statistics of this. We can either say that there is a 50% chance of a child being born having polydactyly, or that the children are going to be born with a 1 to 1 ratio of normal to polydactyly. 
it is possible that question on ethics on this might be asked. Um, they might ask you whether it is worth or whether it is needed to carry out pre-implantation genetic diagnosis on um, somebody that has polydactyly. Since this is just cosmetic, um, there'd be no medical reason to do this, um, but people might want to pay for this. And then there is going to be information. If plastic surgery is done as a baby, um, somebody may never know that they carry the gene for this.